in today's IB A level biology video, hopefully you can see from this diagram that we will be discussing the structure of the heart. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the anatomy of the heart, remember if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you'll know that I like using a box diagram in order to first of all, just get my head around which chamber is which and which vessels feed into which chamber, because that's honestly the easiest way of building up the anatomy of the heart and then we can actually use what we've learned from this simple box diagram to label the more complicated diagram above. So to start with, the heart has four chambers. The next thing to be aware of is the fact that the heart is flipped. So actually this is the left side and this is the right side and it's so important that you know that because without that you can't possibly label the heart correctly. Now the entrance chambers of the heart are known as atria. So we have the left and right atrium and then below we have the left and right ventricles. Now effectively the heart is split into two sides, the left and right side, and the two sides are separated by the septum, which is here. And what that really means is that we have a separation of oxygenation of the blood flowing through the heart. So we can say that the left side is oxygenated and the right side is deoxygenated. This is key that you remember this. Now I've removed the label for the septum so we don't get too confusing with our diagram. But remember that is a wall of muscle separating the left and right sides of the heart. So looking at the oxygenated left side then, remember that blood flows into the heart and enters the atria. So that's why we've got blood entering here. Now blood always enters the heart in veins. So key that you remember. Blood leaves the heart in arteries. So if we've got blood entering the heart at the left atrium, I've told you that it contains oxygen. So where must that have come from? Well, it must have come from the lungs. And remember the word meaning to do with the lungs is pulmonary. So effectively, blood enters the heart in the pulmonary vein. Now next up, the left atrium contracts to force blood into the left ventricle. And now the blood is ready to leave the heart. As I've already said, it leaves, it moves away, away arteries, two A's together. It leaves the heart via an artery, and it's the main artery of the body, so it's the aorta. So we've got our blood entering via the left atrium, being forced into the left ventricle, and then leaving the heart via the aorta. That blood flows around the body, delivering oxygenated blood to respiring cells. This means it therefore becomes deoxygenated. Now that deoxygenated blood can't just simply go back to the lungs for oxygenation. It has to return to the heart, and then the heart forces it onto the lungs. So where's that blood going to enter? Well, it's going to enter into the right atrium. I'm drawing it in blue because it's deoxygenated blood. I've already told you that blood enters in veins, so we're looking at a vein, and indeed we're looking at the main vein, the vena cava. So deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium. The right atrium contracts, forcing blood into the right ventricle. Now, we know the name of the vessel taking blood away from the right ventricle because we know that blood needs to be oxygenated. That occurs in the lungs. So it's going to be a pulmonary vessel. Now blood is moving away from the heart, so it must therefore be the pulmonary artery. And so we've already labeled the four main vessels, the four main chambers. Just a couple of extra things to point out. Now in the walls between the left and right atrium, we have special valves. These are known either as the atrioventricular valves, which makes sense after all, they sit between the walls of the atrium and the ventricles, or they have another name, which is bicuspid and tricuspid, which refers to the number of flaps or cusps that make up each valve. Try and remember for me that tri contains an R, so it sits in the walls of the right ventricle. So these are the tricuspid valves. And then on the left side, therefore, we have the bicuspid valves. So one other thing to point out is the wall of the left ventricle here is much thicker than the wall of the right ventricle. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, the left ventricle is pumping blood all around the body, whereas the right ventricle is pumping blood simply to the lungs, a much shorter distance. So we have a thicker wall 
from the left ventricle to pump blood further and, and at higher pressure. But I'll just mention that again when we go now to look at the more anatomically correct diagram of the heart. But this is your overview. So moving back to the more accurate representation of the heart, we can start by labelling the atria. Remember, these are the entrance chambers. So here's the atrium. Here's another atrium. Remember, the sides are reversed. So actually, this is the right atrium. And here we have the left atrium. Beneath those sit the ventricles. Let's do a bit of colour coding. So we know that the right side contains deoxygenated blood and the left side contains oxygenated blood. Now, personally, I think it's a good idea to show the flow of the blood within the heart and I'll help you work out which vessel is which. So if we start with the left atrium, we know that blood is going to enter here, pass into the left ventricle and then be sent out of the aorta. Now, the aorta, as I've already told you, is the main artery carrying oxygenated blood around the body. Remember that that oxygenated blood came from the lungs, which is why this vessel here is the pulmonary vein, because remember, veins bring blood back to the heart. So we've already labelled a good number of vessels and all the chambers. Now that blood becomes deoxygenated as it travels around the body. We know that it has to return to the heart, and it's going to return to the right atrium. It's a vein bringing deoxygenated blood. That vein is the vena cava or vena cava. The right atrium contracts, forcing blood into the right ventricle. And then that blood leaves. Where's it going? Well, it's going to the lungs, hence the term pulmonary, and it's carrying blood away from the heart. So it's the pulmonary artery. Just a couple of things to point out. Look at the wall here in the left ventricle versus the right ventricle much thicker wall in the left ventricle. We've already described the reason for that. It's because that blood is being pumped much further and at much higher pressure. Next up, the valves. We've already mentioned the valves which sit between the atria and the ventricles. These are the atrioventricular valves or the bicuspid and tricuspid valves. Remember, they prevent the backflow of blood. So we have the left AV valves here and the right AV valves over here or the tricuspid valves. You'll notice on the diagram that there are other valves drawn, such as here. These are pretty obvious ones. Now these are known as semilunar valves, and that's due to their shape. But again, they're going to prevent backflow of blood, and you can work out in which direction. They're going to prevent the blood flowing from the pulmonary artery back into the right ventricle. There's a second set in the aorta. Sorry, I might have been a bit unclear with my colouring of the green, but you can see the second set here are the semilunar valves preventing backflow of blood in the aorta. And really, I'm now looking at the diagram and I'm pretty happy. I think I've labelled absolutely everything I wanted to. Remember I said that there was a separation of the left and right side and that was a wall of muscle known as the septum here. It's the same as the muscle that sits between your two nostrils. That's also known as a septum. So it's a separation. 